I'm assuming that families, patients like this drug. Yes. <laughs> yes. And they want this drug. Absolutely. So if they hear of any roadblocks to this drug, they must go berserk. A absolutely. What do you hear? And, you know, a lot of our patients don't understand, um, you know, how decisions are made on the payer side. Um, and so, you know, I think that doing more education uh, for patients and caregivers to really understand how payers make decisions is, is a need that we're seeing um, with our patients. Do the patients have to understand how insurance companies think? They just want their kid helped. Uh, well, uh, I think that's a, a valid argument. I do think that it would um, help reduce some of the frustration a bit um, if there is really? a bit more understanding. Really? Let me see. Let me see how unfrustrating uh, I, I, this is. <laughs> oh, I, the drug company, I, I understand that they won't let my kid live. I'm not frustrated anymore. Why doesn't that right. I, I understand what you're saying. I think that um, for many families, um, you know, hearing a no is a no. And, and when you need a yes, I, I don't think it, it matters to some families. But I think that um, navigating insurance is an important is an important um, skill that rare disease families need to have. Let me translate a no, and you tell me if I'm right. A no to an insurance company is no. You know, that we've, we've done the cost analysis on this, it doesn't make sense. Um, a no to a family is death. Absolutely. That's what they hear. They don't want to hear no, scientifically it doesn't mean much. It, they say their no, frustration that's is my valid. only hope. Yes, their, their frustration and anger is valid. Um, you know, my sister had a rare disease and she had challenges navigating um, insurance and, and finding physicians that were knowledgeable and, um, you know, getting access to uh, treatments. And so I understand as, as a caregiver myself, um, the frustration um, personally. Um, I think that knowledge is power. And I think being able to understand how to navigate insurance, how to um, talk to insurers, how to um, talk to your provider to help them be your advocate is all very, very important as a rare disease patient. All right, let's, let's change gears. If you thought this was expensive, we're about to hit overdrive, I'm guessing, because now we've got gene replacement therapy. Okay, I'm not even going to make a run at, at pronouncing this name. This is your job. Okay. What is this called? Solgensma is okay. the name now for this treatment, but it used to be called AVXS 101 because it was developed by a company called Avexis. Um, so the uh, concept behind this therapeutic modality is um, to use a viral vector to deliver back the SMN1 gene that is missing in the patient. So they um, use this viral vector to transduce this gene. It kind of lives in the cell, not actually part of the DNA, but its own um, generating protein in the cell um, within the nucleus and okay. um, gives back that SMN protein that you're missing. This is, this is scary, but really exciting, right? Because you're taking a virus and the virus, you've altered the, the, the molecular material the, the, in the virus itself so that when it infects a cell and injects this molecular material, it doesn't make new virus. What it does is it makes a gene in there that starts to make the chemical that these patients lack. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's self-replicating. Once it's in and once it's working, you're not just treating a disease. Here comes the word that is really amazing. You've cured the disease. This is a C. Yeah, what you're trying to do is have continual expression of this particular uh, genetic message that you're trying to get across. Um, so the theory behind it is that it would only need to be delivered one time, yep. right? So you have a, that's the difference between something like nusinersen, where you're looking at a lifetime of She's maintenance medication. She's smiling because there's only one dose. Yeah. Okay, um, but there's questions about the. Um, the level of expression that you're going to have over the long term in different types of tissues. So SMA has a huge advantage in this in that the primary problem is the motor neuron. So if you can get something in there that's going to maintain, motor neurons aren't dividing any longer. You have the motor neurons that you have for life right from birth and they're not a replicating cell. So if you have healthy expression of SMN in a motor neuron, it's likely that that's going to persist. But there's other tissues that also need SMN that are dividing. And once they divide, they're not going to have 
have that transduced vector in them anymore. And this becomes much more of an issue in other disease targets as well that are using gene uh, approaches. All right, I'm still gonna stay excited. Yes. So, um, there was a START trial, a phase one trial. What did that show? So this was a cohort of patients in Ohio. This has again been published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, I think 15 total patients um, treated with gene transfer approach with this agent um, that again had very robust efficacy in terms of the um, the uh, uh, response in terms of functional outcomes. So none of these patients ended up needing uh, significant amounts of respiratory support. Um, the majority of them gained significant motor function over the follow-up period of the trial, again, to the point of standing and walking and these sorts of things. These are, again, infantile onset patients. Did I mention so, she was smiling? Yeah. <laughs> so there's been um, a more expansive uh, uh, trial in the infantile onset and also uh, these are IV delivered for the young babies. It's through an intravenous delivery. Um, in older patients with type 2 SMA, there's been an intrathecal trial that's still in, in research uh, phase. And um, the tolerability has been quite good. There was an issue with liver enzyme transaminase elevation, but this was resolved with um, prednisone treatment around the delivery of the vector. Um, and so in general, it's been well tolerated. You know, this sounds really interesting. How much does it cost? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Do you know? No, it does not have its label yet, and so that hasn't been officially announced. All right, let's yeah. assume if it follows other gene therapies, if we're going to make it a little bit or a lot bit, it's on the lot bit side, right? On the other hand, it's only once, right? Well, that's certainly exciting, and uh, given the cost of the treatment we have today, which is ongoing, uh, the ability, if you really just give it once, uh, that's an if. And then the question is, what is the durability of the effect? Is this indeed going to last five years, ten years? No doubt that if it does, immediately we're going to have the cost offsets if you're not uh, requiring the syndrome. I mean, you know, you're not, you're not going to get a half million dollars a year of drug costs. You may have a billion dollars once, yes. but then nothing. And then maybe they get better, they require lots of less other therapy. That's kind of a win-win. That's exciting, yes, yes. Nice to be in medicine in this era, but isn't it? It, it does require that you do have demonstrated durability. Uh -huh. Well, how do you define durability? I knew, you knew I was going there. Is it five years, 10 years, lifetime? Maybe you need a redose in what, 10 years? Is that good, is that bad? Well, we don't know any of those answers yet, right? We may also have other therapies, and then the question becomes, how do you sequence them? What do you allow in terms of combinations? Okay. So what if gene therapy isn't actually a cure, then what is it that we are paying for? So it, it, I think it brings back the notion that um, as more data evolves, and back to registries, but perhaps initially we need a new payment methodology because the existing payment methodology and in the U.S. Um, it's not the payer who's setting the price tag for a therapy. But that being said, whatever the price tag is, and we now have ICER as a uh, independent body that has already ruled on perhaps what that pricing should be. But independent of that, um, perhaps what we need is a payment methodology that pays over time to guarantee that you're seeing the promised oh, outcomes. Oh, so you amortize the cost. Amortize Just the cost. As exactly. you've amortized, amortized. Just as you've amortized the benefit. It lasts a long time, maybe you can spread that out. 